Star Chef and welcome to the Chrome Life Kitchen. Now for today, I've got a very easy yet exceptionally tasty sweet treat prepared for you guys. And I call it my buckwheat or we can rather say roasted buckwheat brownie bliss balls. Now they really are as tasty and as the name is exceptional. And then for today, we're going to make, make use of the True Food Buckwheat brand. Now guys, um, so first things first, we've got a saucepan here, we're going to prepare it with non-stick spray. Uh, you can start by maybe switching on your stove on a low to medium heat. On my stove I'm going to be putting it on number 4. And a little bit of non-stick spray. I do like the olive oil based one. Now for our ingredients, you see I've got a mixing bowl here. We're going to make use of 300 grams of raisins and 300 grams of dates. Now if you are buying the ones that is the whole dates like you get in store, like the ones over here, you might need to cut them up into small pieces using a kitchen scissor. And the reason for that is um, we're going to be soaking these in hot water because we're going to be making a pulp with it. Now if you're going to keep them whole, it means you have to soak them for so much longer. And let's be honest, who's got time for that, right? Now let's go through the rest of our ingredients quickly. Now we're going to be making use of one cup of buckwheat that we're going to be roasting. Then we're going to have, like I said, our 300 grams of chopped dates. We're going to be adding 150 grams of almond flour. Our 300 grams of raisins. We're going to have uh, make use of three teaspoons of caramel essence, four heaped tablespoons of cacao, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and two grams, that's about two pinches, then of salt. And it is as easy as that. Now we're going to be adding the raisins into our bowl over here. And then you're going to add your dates. And then, like I said, make use of those kitchen scissors I mentioned earlier. And then just start by chopping these dates up into smaller pieces. Just like that. Okay, and you will see some of them do cut a lot easier than the others. And then these are usually the softer, more chewy ones. And if you've gone through all the dates and you can see all the big ones are all chopped up, that's now when you add your water. I would say add enough water that you cover well, most of the dates and the raisins, roughly about 500 ml. And then um, then this is where you can now start roasting your buckwheat. So this can be placed aside in your pan as soon as we've got the temperature going. You're going to add your buckwheat to the pan. Now the reason why I love making use of buckwheat for this recipe is if you actually take one of these and you bite through them, they're quite um, like crunchy, which is obviously perfect. But they also have a very mild, nutty taste. Now when you roast them, that is now when you actually enhance this beautiful, nutty taste. And then they're just exceptional with the chocolate. And then this is going to be roughly 5 to 10 minutes on a low temperature. I do warn you guys, just be patient. Do not put your stove on a too high heat. Because then you're actually going to burn it and ruin everything in the process. So guys, you can see now here in the pan, uh, these buckwheat is beautifully roasted. And if you actually taste them, um, they, they're quite brittle and exceptionally nutty. And um, exceptionally crunchy too. So what we're going to be doing now is now you can put them, set them aside to let them cool off slightly. And um, we've gonna, we're going to get our baking tray ready with some wax paper. You can also just use spray and cook because uh, these babies are only gonna go into the fridge. So it's easiest when you use wax paper on a baking tray to pop them in 
in, in the fridge a little bit later. But first things first, um, our dates and our raisins are actually ready. Now what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be adding 150 grams of almond flour. Then we have our cacao powder. You see it is honestly as easy as that. Just make sure you get all your cacao in. Then our teaspoon of cinnamon. Our three teaspoons of caramel essence. And then last but not least, those two pinches of salt. The first one is because it's needed and the second one I always say is for love. Now slowly but surely, be careful of the cacao, we're going to start stirring all of this together. I suggest you use a tablespoon for this in the beginning. Okay. All the beautiful colours are starting to mix together. Almost like a dairy free sticky chocolate <laughs> with a little bit of toffee in. Now you're going to keep stirring and then um, you're also welcome to get your hands dirty. It does work a lot easier when you use your hands as well. But I always say before you get your hands dirty, just always mix everything together first. It just makes everything so much easier. Okay. Now here's also a trick for you guys. Before you put your hands in this sticky mixture, I do suggest you use a little bit of spray and cook. And you spray and cook your hands because it is non-stick spray. So it will help you so that not everything will stick to your hands. And now you literally want to mix and keep mixing this together for about three to five minutes. Um, it's quite important for you can feel the raisins and the dates mix very well together, but you do need to apply a little bit of pressure for that. And I'll see you guys just now when we then finish off this beautiful recipe. So you guys can see this is now almost like a juicy kind of a chocolate texture. All of the ingredients have mixed so well together, but it is still lukewarm. So what I do um, suggest is that we place it in the fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes. It will allow this mixture to cool off completely, and it's as if it goes a little bit more firm as if it sets. That will also make it so much easier to roll into the little balls uh, when we roll that into this beautiful roasted buckwheat a little bit later. So the chocolate cookie dough has been in the fridge for about 20 to 25 minutes now um, and it is ideal to start make, making these beautiful, how do we say it, roasted buckwheat brownie bliss balls. So first things first, you're going to spray cook your hands a little bit. This does help for the stickiness. Now to get roughly this size, what you need is a teaspoon and you're going to take about one proper like a heap teaspoon of this cookie dough mixture. Just roll it into a little ball. Now you won't be able to do this with the dough um, if it's not cooled off completely. And now it's time to go into the rusted buckwheat. Now as for my side, I hope you enjoy this recipe and stay tuned for the next one.